If you troll down to the west end of Platform 20 at Edinburgh Waverley Station, you'll find a hole in the wall. The hole is behind a fence and a gate, but a sign lets us know that this is the site of the original Edinburgh, Leith, New Haven Railway. If you peer into the hole, you can just see a corrugated pipe running perpendicular to the current lines. Not anything that looks like it was ever a railway, but for a few years, between 1847 and 1868, this was the southern terminus of an interesting but ill-fated line. Permission to build the Edinburgh Leith and New Haven Railway was granted in 1838, but the first section didn't open till 1842 and didn't run all the way into the city centre. The line only went between the foot of Scotland Street in Cannon Mills and Trinity, close to the old chain pier. It was horse-drawn at first, as they wanted to be open in time for Queen Victoria's visit to the city. The site of the original Edinburgh terminus had previously been Cannon Mills Loch, it was no longer the idyllic rural scene depicted here, but a useless and pestilential stank that the locals were glad to see the back of. It took just 24 hours to fill the last remaining corner, the station site, with sand. Now, Cannon Mills isn't particularly central, and the existing horse buses were not in any way affected by a railway that was inconvenient and went at the same speed they did. But a large hill lies between Cannon Mills and the city centre. When the first part of the line opened, the railway company were already working on a tunnel to extend the line south to a new, more convenient station on Canal Street. The site was next door to the proposed terminus for the Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway, which would eventually become Waverley Station. Hang on. Canal Street? There's never been a canal there. Well, one of the many plans to improve the Norloch was to turn it into a large ornamental canal, Princess Street Gardens were created instead, but the street was already named. In an Edinburgh tradition unchanged to this day, the tunnel took longer to build and cost more than anticipated. The railway company bought and demolished Custom House on Drummond Place so the tunnel could be straight. And there were accidents. The worst in November 1844, when workers were trying to connect the two halves of the tunnel. Work on the southern uphill section had been completed first, and no one thought to take a look at it. When they broke through, the water that had accumulated rushed in, killing four. Eventually, after legal wrangles over the stationary steam engine needed to get trains up the 1 in 27 gradient, the tunnel opened in May 1847, and there was an accident a few days later. Going downhill involved using a brake van to slow the train down. Someone neglected to couple the brake van properly at Canal Street, and a few carriages suddenly headed downhill at great speed. They stopped here, at Scotland Street, when they crashed into a train. One carriage was smashed to pieces, but fortunately not many passengers had boarded. Four people, including the brakeman, were injured. This Alden survey map from about 1850 shows the station in incredible detail. I wondered what remained. The site's been filled in level with the top of the platforms, but go on to the bank overlooking the station and you'll find the steps that led down from the road. Some interesting metalwork too. Canal Street Station was closed to passengers after just 21 years and nothing remains. A shopping centre is on the site now. The entrance to the tunnel is somewhere under that coffee shop. This engraving was published just in time for the station's closure in 1868. Okay, it's horribly early by my standards. I haven't slept. I haven't been out of the flat for two weeks and I've decided to get some government sanctioned exercise. I'm standing at the bottom of Scotland Street in Edinburgh. Quite a famous street, but I'm afraid for fans of literature that the even numbers only go up to 28. Sorry to disappoint you. If I'd been stood here in the 1860s and 70s, over there, where that building is, was the Royal Patent Gymnasium, which is worthy of a digression of itself. 
it was basically a load of amazing human powered massive rides that was deliberately cheap and affordable to the ordinary people, not just the knobs. Scotland Street Tunnel is still there, but you can't normally go in. The rest of the line is a foot and cycle path and there are two tunnels that are open. This one is Rodney Street Tunnel. It's just at the other end of Scotland Street Station. It was used for freight up until the 1960s, but by the time I moved to Edinburgh 25 years ago, it had been filled in. It was supposed to be reopened as part of the Millennium Cycle Network in 2000, but to comply with that old Edinburgh tradition, it took till 2009 to actually do it. This attractive 1980s supermarket was built on the site of the railway workshops and engine shed. Trinity Tunnel is the best preserved of the three on the line. The path goes through a trap bed level, so you can see the original shape and size of the other tunnels. The line was originally built to link with ferries at the Chain Pier. You can see the site of the first terminus. When the line was extended to Granton in 1846, this became a coal depot. There's a lot to see at the new Trinity station. Both platforms survive, as does the station building. It's been converted into a house, but many original features remain. The line now made a sharp left and ran along a seawall down to the harbour at Granton. The views are pretty good here. It can get a wee bit blowy though. Trains terminated at a station on the pier. Passengers would catch their ferries to Burnt Island while goods were offloaded and reloaded. The railway owners, the Edinburgh and Northern Railway, then hatched a cunning plan. Why not drive the trains directly onto the boats? A young up-and-coming engineer, Thomas Booch, designed the ramps to do the job. It was only for cargo. Passengers still had to get off. But in 1850, the Leviathan, the world's first proper roll-on, roll-off train ferry went into service between Granton and Burnt Island. The remains of the ramp, minus the rails, are still in use by a yacht club. It was meant to be a short-term measure, to be used until Booch could complete his bridge over the Firth of Forth. Unfortunately, issues with his bridge over the Tay meant his design was scrapped. The roll-on, roll-off ferry stayed in service until 1890, when it was finally replaced by a bridge. You might have heard of it. 